Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tim Shador. I'm a staff engineer at Dutchie, and I'm here today to talk about Datadog Flutter. So a few years ago, we converted a native app into uh, Flutter. We really love Flutter for a number of reasons. Um, the declarative UI, the hot reloading, uh, interoperability with a native platform, um, cross-platform compatibility, so you could write it once and then run it Android, iOS, and even web. Um, at the time, when we first started this project, uh, and even, I guess, a little bit today, the Flutter community was very small. So we had to write a lot of our own plugins, uh, including the one for Datadog. The goal of the Datadog plugin was to write it once um, and then run it on, across all platforms using all of the native Datadog SDKs, the one, the browser-based JavaScript one, the Android one, and the iOS one. Um, so today, I'd like to show you how you can incorporate Datadog into your own Flutter app and how to use this Datadog SDK. Um, before we get to that, though, I have the uh, great privilege of announcing that the Datadog team has decided to make Flutter an official SDK of its own platform. Um, this is no longer a, this will no longer be a community SDK, but will become an officially supported Datadog uh, offering. Um, really excited about that. We've been working with the team for a few months now, uh, and we can't wait to uh, let everybody use it as an, an official uh, product. So, um, without further ado, uh, let's jump into the code. Uh, we'll start with the main file. So for the uninitiated, main.dart is the entry point for the application. Uh, in the main.dart file, there's a main function, <laughs> obviously. Uh, and in the main function, you can initialize uh, your Datadog SDK just as you would in a regular uh, native environment. So here we'll have the ROM application ID, or the client token for logging, the environment, the service name, as well as any other uh, platforms that you intend to run your app on, whether that's iOS or web, um, they're both supported here in this initialize function. Um, you then continue to initialize the services that you want to use. We'll get into these in just a minute. Um, let's say it's tracing, say it's logging, say it's uh, Datadog ROM, all these are natively supported by the same SDK and the same Flutter package. So let's take a look at logging first. Um, we'll jump over here to the logs file. Um, and just a quick word on Flutter logging. So there's a Flutter package called logger and most plugins will implement the logger package. Uh, and this is because there's a function on logger called root on listen. And there's just a stream of all events that pass through any logger instance goes through this string and you can forward it to whatever service you want. In our case, we forward these events into Datadog. Um, this also allows you to uh, have different loggers that are running off of the root. So you can have one logger here, you can have one logger in main, you can have one logger just for your error handling. Um, all those loggers can then uh, be filtered at like, I'm only logging at a specific level, I'm only logging at the error level, I'm only logging at the info level. Um, so here on the right, we have some buttons. Uh, we're building an app for our friend Spider-Man. There's a brand new suit and he wants to just get a little bit of telemetry out of it. So we have all these different buttons with different levels that map um, roughly to the data dog levels of like info, debug, notice, uh, config, warn, and error. So here we'll use um, our logger instance, just uh, your regular old Flutter logger, nothing fancy about this, finest, and uh, this will automatically report into the Datadog layer based on how we've set it up in main.dart. Uh, all this code is available, by the way, on the GitHub page for the package. So if we come into the Flutter console, or so, excuse me, into the Datadog console, we can see all of these different logging events uh, how, how they translate into Datadog levels. So from fine to finest, it's a debug level. Uh, at the config level, it's info. The info level is notice. Um, the warning level is warn. And the severe level is error. Um, you can also see that we've defined our host here. Uh, it's the Spidey suit as well as um, the service. You want your host to be something unique, like a user email or a user ID or maybe a device ID, something to uh, uniquely identify each user's experience. The Datadog Flutter Logger also has an ability to add custom attributes. Uh, attributes are a huge part of Datadog logging uh, because you can convert these into metrics or facets and you can make them um, easy in, in say like report generation or predictability or uh, growth over time um, to keep track of how your users are uh, using your app. So uh, the Datadog plugin supports Booleans, strings, integers, and floats. You can see here in the code, uh, a quick example of that, these custom attributes that we have here. Um, as you'll uh, astutely notice, there's a blank host here because we're using a different logger actually. Uh, we're not using the same logger that all these other ones are using. And this just shows that you can have 
different attributes and different um, configurations on each logger. There's other functions such as add tag and remove tag, and these map pretty closely to what um, to what the Datadog native uh, API uses. Uh, so let's get into tracing. Tracing is another one of my uh, favorite features of Datadog. It's, it allows you to see your end-to-end -end requests from the client all the way to the back end back. And so there's uh, around your performance metrics. There's also some really good stuff with like APM. You can see that if you made the request on the client, it hit the database. The database made like uh, five queries, did a couple of joins, and then returned it through the Rack server and then back to the client. So we can see all that rich information in a flame graph, as well as in um, in the response times for each one of those requests. It's really helpful for debugging performance and figuring out where are the slow points of your application. So here we we'll go on to the tracing page, make a couple of requests here, and we'll jump into the APM view. So here you can see our requests that have come through. Um, we get the status code as well as the URL, the method, the round trip response time. And then here would be that flame graph that would show us like the SQL queries of the rack requests. Really, really great for debugging and really, really great for improving the performance of your application. Um, on the Flutter side, all this is handled through a native uh, Dart HTTP client. Uh, so the interface is extremely straightforward. The HTTP package is maintained by the Dart core team. And this is just an extension of it. If you're using a system like Brick, you can also compose the client uh, and invoke it on that client's requests. So you don't need to always just use this client. You can in interpolate it with an existing HTTP package that you might already have. Um, this is based on the advice of the Dart team. And so most plugins should already support this sort of composition in your HTTP clients. Tracing is a super, super great feature, super great for improving the performance of your app. And the last thing that the Datadog Flutter package does is RUM. Um, RUM is real user monitoring, and it tracks like your user interactions across the app. You can log specific events that a user does, such as, say, tapping, scrolling, swiping, et cetera, clicking. Um, and all of these go through and they're, normal, they're normalized whether you're using iOS or Android or web. There are some caveats that are noted throughout the application, um, but we don't need to get into those for this, the purpose of this presentation. So let's log a couple events here. Uh, this time Spider-Man's in the middle of a battle uh, and we're trying to get telemetry on his villains. There will be some instances where say you're in a, in a battle of Spider-Man and there's an error and the suit malfunctions. Flutter has a nice way of handling zoned errors so that this doesn't crash your application. Um, but there are some instances where you're not going to have a try and a catch, and this is an error that you just didn't handle properly. Um, in RUM, this sort of error is bubbled up and is used and uses the Datadog uh, stack trace rendering so you can easily see the error and you can still track it and report it, and you can actually get really, really good metrics on that we'll see in a minute. So this is... a uh, the debugger has been paused for the Flutter app. We're gonna continue it now so we can keep going. Um, there's also some custom attributes that you can add here. So these sorts of errors uh, are natively handled based on how you're setting up your Datadog SDK with Flutter. Um, you can do the flutter.onerror equals the Datadog ROM callback, or you can have it in the zone. Um, the zone is pretty common across the community. And so I'd recommend just taking a peek at that main.dart file when you're uh, creating your own application. And then here we can see a similar custom attribute set where our hero uh, is assisting Spider-Gwen, um, see how many punches they both sustained, what Electro is energy at, and whether or not uh, they did in fact save the day. And we'll all get into this in the data log council in just a minute. There's also some fun stuff like resource loading and long actions. So this is uh, for actions that aren't an immediate, like I just tapped it once. It's like I held this button for 10 seconds. Um, and again, these actions do map very closely to what the Datadog native APIs have currently. So let's take a peek over in the RUM console. Uh, we'll look at this session that's been running for a while. Uh, you can see that there's also a, a Flutter observer here that tracks the screen changes. So if I'm starting on say the log screen, I go to RUM, I go to tracing, I go back to RUM, and we, we can see each individual event of this loading the screen. We can also see these tap events that we've triggered here by clicking these buttons based on the add user action um, method from the Datadog RUM instance. So let's take a look at that unhandled error that we had earlier. So here in Datadog RUM, we have a, a lovely view of uh, the stack trace. And so here there's, it kind of condenses it for us, um, but we can see explicitly exactly where 
that was called. So it's on datadog rum.dartline54 column 30. Gives us a really, really good insight on the word to start debugging um, when we approach this code. There's also some error association that Datadog does using these um, using these error messages as well as some of the stack trace. Um, again, this is all handled natively, uh, really like low level. To, you don't need to go out of your way to set this up. It's Flutter on error or using a zone. Um, this was just an unhandled exception that we put in here. But if you do have something like a try catch and you want to manually log that error, let's go back to see that. This was the custom error that we had here in, uh, in this try catch. So here we've logged the error as well as the stack trace. Let's check it out. And here we can see it's on line 60, column 17, um, triggered by uh, the, the method that was invoked on line 58, column 24. Um, Again, really, really powerful way to uh, diagnose the users that have, are using your app and how do they exactly trigger that error. Um, and especially if it's an unhandled error, um, how you reach that state and how you can improve your app by removing that error, or handling it appropriately. Um, let's go further down is also, it will also handle logger errors. So if there's ever like a warning or a shout that comes through from the logs, it'll automatically bring it into RUM as a data log feature. Um, and then let's go and find the custom attributes the custom user action. Or maybe we won't, there it is, custom attributes. So just like with the logs, you can also do custom attributes. Um, and here we see the rich information of uh, the city that I'm in right now, Portland, Oregon, and then also the custom attributes that we have here that we saw um, earlier in our code. So again, uh, strings, booleans, uh, integers and floats are all possible here in the RUM console. Um, RUM is also really great for creating uh, dashboards and adding those uh, along with the custom metrics that maybe you generate through here or maybe that you generate through the logs. Um, and that's Datadog Flutter. So uh, please check it out on GitHub. Uh, all this example code that you've seen today on the right, that example app is available on uh, GitHub under the example directory. Um, We'll try to break it down really nice and clean for you with documentation. You can also run it in the web um, or on Android or on iOS. Uh, and I encourage you to please uh, try all three. Uh, and if any of them break, open up an issue. We'd love to, love to uh, debug it. Thank you very much for watching. And again, super stoked that the Datadog team has decided to move uh, Datadog Flutter and into an official, uh, officially supported SDK on the Datadog platform. Thanks very much, and uh, we'll see you online.